The micro EV explosion is up on us and we've got a bunch of companies that are vying for what could be a huge market share in a very interesting space. My name is Paul Barron, this is Tech Path. We're gonna jump into it today on a company by the name of Arkimoto, trading under the call sign FUV for their fun vehicle that is really all about the company uh, and how they produce. So if you're not familiar with Arkimoto, let me kind of read you a little bit about our headquartering in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, basically, they're a three-wheel manufacturer. Uh, electric vehicles basically kind of help this whole movement toward EV. They went public uh, in 2017. They launched in 2007, so that took them 10 years to kind of get there. Uh, now available on pre-order, uh, both in, Cal or in California, Oregon, Washington, Florida, and that's kind of their market zones that they're going after. Uh, they are available uh, for pre-order on the Deliverator and the Rapid Responder, which is really geared toward that last mile uh, delivery and emergency response uh, as well. And then they have two additional concepts uh, currently in the in play right now. One is called the Cameo and then the Roadster, which I'll talk a little bit about the Roadster and what kind of impact that has on the company. The thing that you have to understand is, is when you look at the price point, let's kind of talk to that. Price point alone on one of these units currently, this is kind of their FUV vehicle, kind of their, their flagship. Uh, at 17,900, they're using the Tesla model, which is direct to you, uh, and also the $100 you know, due today, and then you get your vehicle and you get in line. Um, mainly you get in line because the production capacity is very, very low. Uh, based on, well, I don't know. It, it, we'd have to really compare against maybe companies like Arrow or others to really kind of understand where the production capacity could be for these markets. And that's really kind of what my questions are. And I'm hoping to have the Arkimoto CEO on soon to talk about this. But if you look at their stock price and where Arkimoto has been over the past few weeks, um, you know, their trading high was about 36.80 uh, early February. Uh, and that was a good ramp up and we've seen a fairly significant plummet of their stock down to, I think just uh, here recently, uh, probably encroaching on 20 bucks a stock by the time you see this video, if that slide continues to occur. There's some things that Arkimoto has really got to step up and do to be able to move this company into a space, which I think is very underserved at this point. If you look at their financials, and, and, and you're an investor, I know you get a chance to kind of break down their uh, financials. This is a good, a good example on their year-over-year -year financials. I want to kind of circle out their earnings, or I shouldn't say earnings, uh, basically their net operating income, which was a negative uh, net income of $15 million. That's in 2019. And uh, where we were looking at 2018, they lost $11 million. Um, this is a company definitely who is in startup phase. They've been building at a pace of as I gathered, uh, if I remember my numbers correctly in their third quarter earnings, was we haven't seen their first, first quarter earnings call yet, um, that it was somewhere in the range of around 30 to four, uh, 35 to 40 vehicles. So that was their entire uh, quarter production, uh, which is a big issue, I think, if we're gonna be able to move into uh, taking on what I think is the big market, and that's gonna be utility and delivery. Let's talk about the big questions, because this is the big one that I think is very important to address is the 50,000 unit annually in two years. This was projected in their third quarter earnings call. Um, and how do they get there? I mean, cause that's, that's a huge scenario of going up from where they are today to 50,000 of these units in a year. Uh, obviously the scalability of this company is one that we've got to really keep a close eye on because this is going to be a factory, I mean a factor, and maybe that is the point. They need to really develop either an alignment with a manufacturer who can assist them in being able to grow or they're going to have to really look at completely revamping. I know they have plans to revamp their current factory unit and they're waiting to move and maybe get into that kind of space and, and kind of jump to that next level. But let's talk about whether or not they should be addressing certain markets. Now, um, this gets a little interesting because I think there's, there's a lot of um, scenarios here that are occurring. I know that everybody, when you think of EVs, you think, you know, well, what did Tesla start with? Well, they started with the Roadster, uh, but that was a, a kind of a fun, you know, and passion project that I think Elon had. And it kind of did put Tesla on the map. It was a good pomp and circumstance. Uh, you know, it, it is one of those things that it kind of moves into the market and I completely get that. You get attention and it's a very good thing. 
the, the Model S was really kind of their core, but they didn't sell a ton of those, still being uh, on Tesla. Before Tesla went vertical was when they dropped in the Model 3. The Model 3 transformed Tesla, and the Model Y is going to do the same thing again. Both of those vehicles are designed for a completely different market share, which is the broader base of where the market could be in terms of uh, EVs. And where, why that's relative to the three-wheel companies, the micro EVs, is because the broader base is probably not going to be the weekend uh, enthusiast that's gonna buy the FUV vehicle. Instead, I feel like the market is going to be pointing at the utility and delivery industry. And I wanna talk about that and why this could explode, because I've done some analysis and, and how Arkimoto could become a monster company and stop selling EVs, or in this case, uh, three-wheel three, three uh, EVs being the fun machines. So let's look at that. What markets are they addressing? Uh, they are getting some advanced uh, tech funding right now from uh, the Department of Energy. That's going to help them, and if they can, if that goes through, it's going to definitely help them in terms of their manufacturing capability. Uh, they do have some other points that are good, and that is the micro, uh, the motorcycle in, uh, insurance companies are picking up Arkimoto as a vehicle now that they can get insured. Uh, they are announcing some new market areas, so outside of the coastal states and the sunshine states, uh, that obviously will be very interesting. These are open air uh, vehicles, so you know, riding one of these in this time of year in almost any place except the south and the west is going to be difficult uh, to do. And then the Deliverator is the one that I think is uh, the vehicle that they need to scale. Now, they are really ramping up toward this Roadster. I still believe this is a passion proje project for them. And I just don't know if it's the right direction. If I was looking at the company and just trying to make money, uh, which is what I hope they're trying to do, uh, I know they have to kind of position and kind of stake their flag in the ground and own the micro EV market because there is some you know, some hot competitors, but they could be in a position where they're doing this and kind of uh, losing the forest for the trees. And it could be an opportunity if they really just pull their ears back and just let's go uh, after the delivery market, it could kind of completely explode. Um, they have the guy that could help them do this. And that's Sandy Monroe. Uh, his basically is a legend in the automotive industry. Um, and, and he's really designed it, how do you build scalability and how do you get market or manufacturing efficiency in, in place? So I think that is in place. They've already uh, you know, contracted with, Monroe, I think it's Monroe and Associates. And when you listen to Sandy Monroe really talk about these uh, kind of companies, he's kind of got a little bit of a love uh, fest going on there for Arkimoto, rightly so, because he thinks there's an opportunity uh, to go that direction and, and really make a difference. I still believe it as well. Between the two companies, I'm leaning both ways. I'm kind of leaning towards Arkimoto because I like their marketing and kind of what their position of the brand is. But if they don't good, get a good direction moving, uh, that could be a challenge. Arrow, on the other hand, they're very, you know, kind of pinned in to that delivery, uh, you know, scenario. And I do think that is an opportunity. They need to pick up their marketing and they also need to figure out how to create some value adds that they can really kind of dominate the market. Additional big questions here, and this goes into the scalability. So in Q3, they shipped, here it is, 31 vehicles during the quarter. Uh, and this is from their Q3 earnings call. They're forecasting uh, in their Q3 earnings call, they were forecasting that they could jump up to four units daily, all right, daily in Q1 and Q2 and eight units uh, per day in uh, Q3 and four being 2021. This gets them to about 1,600 units per year, and that's with 208 working days a year they were factoring that on three working days a week. Uh, I said, let's work a little harder and go to four working days a week and try to get to that. But even at that point, you're only at 1,600 units. How do you potentially scale to 50,000 units? This is the billion dollar question potentially as a market cap for this company. Uh, They're edging in on about a $700 million market cap right now at the current state. Um, the rental model, I think, has a very limited opportunity. We have a rental model uh, right here near us down in Key West, Florida. And I think that's going to be fun. It might be a great place for people to experience the vehicle, you know, to own this. Uh, but I just don't know that that's the big potential market for it. 
And there's so few of those places out there. Uh, and even if they had a fleet of six or eight of these things, I just don't necessarily see it moving on. Something like an EV fleet uh, for uh, a restaurant industry or chain, that starts to change the game really quick. And that's going to be the deliverator that would do that. If So if this were to drop into a Chipotle or into you know any one of the thousands of restaurant concepts that are out there, millions of restaurant concepts that are out there that are going to be uh, really growing their delivery business. And that's something we talk about all the time. If you have not had a chance to check out our other podcasts and videos, check out the Barron Report, because I go into deep detail on this uh, around delivery and why it is the future of that business. And there are some big key uh, scenarios here for Arkimoto that I think can really play into this. Listen, I'm not hating on Arkimoto at all. I think this is a company that has some potential upside. They have got to be able to push to answer these bigger questions, scalability and what's the revenue model and how do you get there? So I thought, hey, let's just do a revenue model real quick on how Arkimoto could really move into a game that would blow everyone's mind. We're talking, you know, in the stock prices of anywhere between 200 and 500 a share. Here's how they could do it. Let's break these slides down. So when you look at just the restaurant industry by itself, and I went, I went super conservative. If you have not watched my uh, Tesla Robo Delivery Vehicle uh, video, you've got to check this out because it's the same model. But the difference was is I went super hyper conservative uh, for Arkimoto, mainly because of the scale situation on being able to manufacture the car. So I looked at, at basically in 2022, that's next year, um, going and being able to snag 35,000 restaurant concepts. Now that, and I say concepts, meaning individual units. Um, even on the occasions per day at about 130, which is about average for the U.S., uh, total food occasions, that's still 1. Uh, bill, 1.6 billion deliveries on the 35,000 uh, units in the restaurant space. So that's delivery orders of 802,000 uh, at 49 percent of what that revenue of that restaurant is doing. And the average delivery order, you know, it's, uh, it's hovering and we think that's going to grow from around 26 bucks up to maybe 30 over the next five years. So you can kind of see the math here as we grow the restaurant concepts from 35,000 to uh, 175,000 restaurants. And this would still be only about 20 percent of the market by 2026. Um, and that's if Arkimoto were able to dominate in the delivery space. Now let's go over and look at the total delivery revenue. Uh, these are billions. That's 21 billion, 50 billion, 87, 123, 80, 185 billion across the total industry of sales. As you can see, we're estimating at 1.7 trillion of the restaurant industry uh, by 2026. And of course, if you went in with a fee structure on something like this and were able to create a fleet product, whether you operated it, meaning Arkimoto operated it, or they worked with partners to operate it and shared in the revenue and the manufacturing sales of the vehicle, that's $46 billion a year at 10% on the margin. $56 billion if they go on a 12%. Here's the kicker. The kicker to be able to do this is I need 42,000 of these in my fleet uh, to get to this level. We'll steer, we, we are still talking a very small portion of the marketplace. 99,000 by year two, 150, 160,000 by year three, all the way to 330,000 of these three wheel vehicles by year uh, five or 2026. So that being the case, this really sets Arkimoto up for a potential here. Now, if they just sold the vehicles, just selling the vehicles to that marketplace, if you look at the number, 30,000, uh, and I'm basing this off of the $15,000 better price point because I think Monroe is going to help them get to a better price point. This basically gets them to $3.9 billion over the next five, six years in total revenue sales, $975 million in 2026. And that's if they produce 65,000 of these vehicles and sell them all. This is a huge opportunity for uh, any micro EV company that's out there. There are some, some steps that have to be taken to make this work. Uh, there are a lot of strategies that they will have to implement that are way outside the EV space. Uh, the question will be, does Elon beat everybody to this? I'll reference my EV uh, or robo-delivery uh, 
you know, video, because I talk about this, is whether or not Tesla is going to go in this direction. And if they do, even if they do, we are still talking about a scenario that could be maybe uh, further out. So this could be an opportunity, especially as autonomy starts to play into this, because the vehicle cost and or monthly maintenance of something like this versus paying a fee, there's so many variables here. And I think there's some things that could happen over time to basically morph the business model over time, which is really the next seven to 10 years of being able to really implement and, and own this particular market for uh, food delivery, utility delivery, and the such. Uh, huge market, both in retail, restaurant, biggest markets on the planet right now. You know, And if you're looking at any kind of logistic systems out there, all of these micro EV companies have got to be thinking in basically 3D chess right now. Because right now, I know they're up against the wall on trying to get productivity under control and getting scale. Um, and I completely understand that and I understand where they're going. But if you're going to jump the shark, you've got to be able to knock it out of the park in one of these uh, particular delivery markets and or sales markets, which I think Arkimoto and Aero could both be primed for right now. We may see these two companies going head to head for this business very soon. As I said, we love to have uh, CEOs here on TechPath breaking down some of these things in our analysis of the EV, AI, and technology industries and really kind of where the markets are rolling. Uh, if you have an idea for someone that you think should be here, shoot us an email to uh, producer at revernetworks.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath. Thank <laughs> you.